start a slow bar cafe using mocha pods. Hot coffee, iced coffee, wrap. The taste of the coffee coming out of the mocha pot are equally delicious. Not as strong as the espresso, but if you follow my recipes, especially the ones that are in my book, The Basic Barista, you should be able to get beautiful, strong tasting coffee that will be one of your best sellers. If you have a milk tea shop or a coffee shop that you cannot offer hot drinks at the moment, using mocha pots will be the way to go. Very low investment, very niche, very trendy, and also you get very good tasting coffee. What do you need to make your hot coffee drinks? If you're using an electric mocha pot, this is all you need, electric mocha pot. If you're using a regular mocha pot, you need a stove top. I'm using an electric hot plate here, which I can also use to steam my milk. So I need a steaming pitcher. I need my mocha pot. I have one cup here and three cups. You need a scale. You need a coffee scoop. You need a milk frother. So I'm using an electric milk frother here. If you have a manual milk frother or a French press, that's also possible. And finally, last but not the least, you need a coffee grinder. This will ensure that your coffee is freshly ground and freshly brewed, beans to cup. And for the ingredients, of course, we need our coffee beans. And for coffee beans, today's video tutorial, I'm going to use my medium roast. I prefer the medium roast for my hot drinks. And because we are going to make milky drinks, then I'm going to use fresh milk. And we are going to make four classic milky drinks, latte, cappuccino, mocha and caramel macchiato. For this video tutorial, I am going to make use of only one cup and three cups because I'd like to brew it per cup. If all you have is six cups, then you might have some leftover brew. That's okay. You can use your leftover brew, put them in the refrigerator, and if you need to use it later, you can warm them. But that is not ideal if you're serving them hot and fresh. You can also use electric mocha pot, which is easy to use. All you have to do is to plug and play. But, of course, if you don't have electricity in your shop, these mocha pots are better options because you can also use a gas burner. Let's start by brewing our coffee using a one cup mocha pot. Preheat your hot plate to maximum heat. If using a gas burner, use medium heat. Fill your basket with one scoop of medium grind coffee or about seven to nine grams of coffee. Gently tap the sides to let the coffee settle loosely. Level off. Pour warm water into the boiler just below the pressure valve or about two ounces. Place the filter basket on the boiler. Use a towel to lock the pot on. Do not touch the base as it would be very hot. Place onto the stove top. A minute into brewing, reduce the heat to medium and wait for the coffee to stream into the pot. This should not take any more than 1.5 minutes. As you see the coffee streaming into the pot, turn the heat off. You might wish to close the lid to avoid coffee spewing out. As soon as you hear the boiling stops, take it off the heat. The whole process should take no more than 3 minutes. Next, let's brew our coffee using the 3 cup mocha pot. For the three cup mocha pot, fill your basket with about two scoops of medium grind coffee. This should be about 18 grams of ground coffee. If you have a tamper, tamp lightly to pack the ground coffee in. Less coffee means no crema. Pour four ounces of warm water into the boiler. Place the filter basket into the boiler, lock the pots on, and place on the hot plate to start brewing. The brewed coffee should start streaming into the pot after about one and a half minutes. Look at that crema. You should always aim to get the good crema. If using a regular mocha pot, the crema would be good if you are using fresh coffee beans and the right amount of coffee in the basket. On to preparing the milk for our milky drinks. Use a steaming pitcher. Fill to about the bottom of the spout. Use the hot plate or microwave the milk, whichever is easier. Do not boil the milk. 
As soon as you see smoke coming off the surface, take it off the heat. Here I am using an electric milk frother to foam my milk. If you are using an electric milk frother, it should not take long. Wait until the milk doubles in size or the jug is nearly full. Now that we have our brewed coffee and our steamed milk, let's make our hot drinks. We are going to do it the basic barista way for all beginners. First drink, hot latte. For the latte, we need one to one and a half ounce of brewed coffee. Pour the steamed milk into your cup all the way to the top. Finish it off with a dollop of milk foam. Next, let's make hot cappuccino. We need one and a half to two ounces of brewed coffee. This time, we are going to scoop the foam first into the cup and then pour the milk over, creating that thick milk foam on top. Finish it off with a sprinkle of cocoa powder or ground cinnamon. Serve with a teaspoon and an optional sugar sachet. Next, it is hot mocha. For hot mocha, I am going to use my homemade chocolate syrup. Use half an ounce to one ounce of chocolate syrup. One to one and a half ounce of brewed coffee. Pour the warm milk in and top it up with a dollop of milk foam. Finish it off with some homemade chocolate sauce on top. And you have your hot mocha. Finally, we are going to make hot caramel macchiato. We need one pump or 1.5 pumps of caramel syrup. I'm using Tarani here. This time, we are going to pour the milk into the cup first. Next, pour one to one and a half ounce of brewed coffee. Cover the coffee stain with milk foam and finish it off with caramel sauce on top. For details on how to select your coffee, how much water you put in your mocha pots, and also how much coffee you need to put in the mocha pot, check out the link above, which is a very, very detailed tutorial. So I hope you will watch that after you watch this video tutorial. So I'm going to start with my mocha, my favorite. Mm. The coffee is just about right, smooth and almost velvety with that chocolate, delicious. For my latte, there should be no sugar at all. Mm. I think I like this taste as well. It's just very, very smooth combination of the milk and the espresso. It's a perfect balance for those that really like their coffee to be milky and more milk than coffee. This is just very smooth. I'm sure you love it. Okay, and now for my caramel macchiato. Wow, I love the look of this. Mmm, the taste of caramel. Mmm. I love this taste as well. The strength of your coffee depends on how much water you put in your mocha pot. So for a one cup, it's quite easy. Just put it just below the valve, just about two ounces. For a three cup, I would suggest that you fill the filter basket and do not put any more than four ounces of water in here. If you use about five ounces of water, which is the capacity, the taste of the coffee will be diluted with water. Check the recipe that I have indicated in my book and you should get a really perfect taste of coffee and milk. And finally, the cappuccino, this should be stronger, but I, should, I like the taste of cinnamon with it. Mm. Rich, thick, very foamy, leaves um, a milk mustache. <laughs> That's the idea with cappuccino. Mm. And the smell of cinnamon is just the perfect combination. So there you go. 
it is now easy for you to make or serve hot coffee drinks in your milk tea or coffee shops using a relatively low investment on mocha pots. Stay safe, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Ciao for now.